say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. You know what we've got laying right here in front of us? Ribs. People have been asking me for my ribs recipe and I'm gonna go ahead and give that out. We did a hog killing recently. We showed where all parts and pieces from the hog came from. And that has been one of our more successful YouTube pieces. 17,000 hits on that already. A lot of people are watching. We appreciate you checking it out. Now, tonight we're gonna to do a pork butt. It's all about the pork and some sides and ribs. There's a million different ways to do your ribs, and I have been working on it for years. Here's how I do mine. Membrane off. Take that membrane off. Very simple, just kind of slide your knife under and pull it off. Now, I like to start with a dry rub, and this is my dry rub. And I have worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and worked on it, and I have finally got the combination that I like, and that's kind of top secret. I can't tell you that yet, but. There are so many dry rubs out there. Try one you like, make it up yourself. On the internet, there's plenty of, plenty of uh, recipes out there. Mine's got a lot of paprika in it, brown sugar, just enough to cover everything up. Now, a lot of people are using mustard now to kind of seal everything up, and I'm liking to do that. The good old boys down in Western Kentucky do this. People down in Memphis do this. Let me tell you what, they can really cook, and I miss some of those old boys. Uncle Russ, I hope he's doing okay. Sure, Miss Speedy. Now, I'm gonna take this mustard. You notice I'm not handling this any more than I have to. I'm gonna spread that around. That'll kind of seal everything in, keep that dry rub on there. Got a lot of plastic. Keeping my, keeping my cutting board there from getting contaminated. You know, it's easy if you think about it before you do it, cleanup can be a lot easier. Put you down some plastic or aluminum foil. Even when you're cooking, maybe throw some aluminum foil down on your baking pans or different types of things that can save you some cleanup in the long run. Now that's pretty much what that side's gonna look like. I'm gonna turn this over. Same thing on this side. Find your dry rub you like. Experiment, find your own dry rub recipe and try it. Add the, th the things you like. Some people like it more sweet, some people like it more tangy. Now that's the way and I'm gonna do that. And again, mustard. I'm gonna rub that in to kind of seal that up. Now I have tried low and slow and I've tried all kinds of different temperatures. And I tell you what, recently, in the last year or so, I have discovered the big green egg and I really, really enjoy that. Uh, in a little while, a buddy of mine, Jason Brymeyer, is gonna do a pork roast for us. By the way, I'm fixing this for a reason. It's my birthday. Now people should be cooking for me, wouldn't you think? It's Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Why can't somebody come in here and cook for me? It's my birthday. But anyhow, we are having a little birthday celebration and I'm doing the cooking. We're gonna show you how to do a pork butt. This is my rib recipe. Now when I'm done with this, and I get it all sealed up, ready to go, I'll put that in plastic. I'll wrap it up and put it in the refrigerator overnight. I'll bring that out the next day, let it set for an hour or two, get to room temperature. I'm gonna go to my big green egg. I'm gonna get out up to, I'm gonna go ahead and raise that temperature up to about 400 degrees, bring it back down to around 230 degrees. That's where I like this at. I'm gonna go for about five hours on the big green egg. That last hour, I'm gonna bring these off the egg. I'm gonna take them in aluminum foil. I'm gonna put some barbecue sauce on it, seal it back up, cook it for that last hour. Still at 230 degrees, I'm telling you what, it is fantabulous. Now, 
Here's a buddy of mine, Jason Brymeyer, going to show us how to do the same thing, how to make a pork butt on the big green egg. And let me tell you what, it is tasty, tasty. Jason Brymeyer, you know what? I got to tell you, I've been cooking on this thing all day long. We still got a flame, and, he, and I called you, I said, yeah, you know, what about smoking? And you said, let's do a butt. You said, I'll bring my butt with me. And I said, bring it on out, bring it and on we'll down. put one on. Now, you know what? Everybody likes to smoke butt. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the green egg, which we've been doing several different recipes on. The great thing about this, again, is the fact that it retains heat. You can set your temperature by your vents up and down, and you can walk away from it. Absolutely. How do you smoke in it, though? Smoke in it? The key to smoking in the big green egg is the plate setter. Plate setter. This is called the plate setter. It is the number one accessory that you need. Egg accessory. Egg accessory. What it does is it changes your egg from just a grill to indirect heat because you can see that it changes and it brings the heat up instead of coming right underneath what you're cooking, it brings it around and makes it circulate. So it circulates all the way top and bottom. You flip it over the other way and it becomes a baker. The heat still comes up and then it- Pizza, pizza. Pizza. Which we'll talk Biscuits. about. Biscuits. How about bread? Bread, absolutely. Ah, Almost anything. That's for a later date. But the thing is, we got our candles lit. We're getting ready to have a nice quiet evening. We've been cooking on it all day. Why not put a little more charcoal on it? You have to have, you're going to you, walk away for several hours. Right. You need to, you'll need to get a load of charcoal. Usually what I do, just like when you start it, you get a good bed going, you get your temperature up. Gotcha. So you now bring, what do you want your temperature to be on? Well, you're going to want to bring it up to that 500 degrees. Just like we said, you warm it all the way up and, and bring, it, bring down. it down. Now, guess what? We got more Dizzy Pig. We got more Dizzy Pig. We got pig. a different flavor this time. This is this is their flagship. This is the this is the Dizzy Dust. Dizzy Dust. And it's actually available in a couple of different ways. You can get a coarse and you can get a salt free, but this is this is the original. This is Dizzy Dust and their uh, their uh, basic barbecue rub. You opened the big hole. When I opened the big hole. We're gonna we're gonna just liberally apply that. Now we just got a just got a butt. Nice thick layer. I like it. And you're gonna get it on all all your sides. All corners. Don't be shy with it. I love this stuff. All right, and we're gonna take our plate setter. We've got a nice fire reestablished in there. Put that in there, goes in a couple of notches. And I see how you've got that side open, so man, it can just, all that Sits. smoke flavor will circulate later in there. You can mm -hmm. already see it just working around. Mm -hmm. Put our grate in, put our butt on. And just like that, there it is. <laughs> there we are. Shut her down. We're gonna shut her down, and now, we're gonna adjust our temperature. What do you want, to, what is your, once you get her all dialed in, what do you wanna walk away at? I wanna walk away between 200 and 225. Gotcha. Oh, and look at that. I bet you that'll be 200 degrees for another 12 hours. Wow. Now, that's a pretty good size butt. How many pounds would you say? Uh, between around seven pounds, I would guess. It's a good size butt. Now, how long would you want that to cook? I cook a butt at about 200 degrees, about an hour and a half per pound. Gotcha. You know the great thing about having a television show with Housewarmings as a sponsor? I got two big green eggs. so. Meanwhile, while this one was cooking, we set this one up a long time ago, and guess what? It's almost done. The it tricks of TV. You know what? I'm going to let you walk over there and bring it right back over here, and we'll see what we got going on. There we go. Now, like I said, Tim, you can you can take it off and you can wrap it up, get it simmering in its own juices. So we took it off after about eight hours, and it's been sitting oh, there. Oh man, I'm wrapped that. up. It's like Christmas. Unwrap. Oh man. When you have one man. of those. All right. Oh, what a smell. Now you're talking about pulled pork. Let's for those pulled 
pork. Oh, I see where you're going with that. There's so many ways you can serve this. You can make your pulled pork plate with some coleslaw. I mean, you can take and put it on a bun with your favorite barbecue sauce. sauce, which, by the way, I got a new barbecue sauce I want to show you that's absolutely phenomenal. Back to this. We got, uh, so, yeah, and, and this is where it's called pulled pork. You just pull it. Wow. But look at that. Now, you won't smack my hand if I reach in here and grab a piece of this. I got there. forks. You got at your own I'm, risk. I am taking that risk. No, that's what pulled pork ought to taste like. Look at that pink. Oh, my. Nice, beautiful smoke. You know, one thing I wondered about smoking is in a lot of traditional smokers, you'll have to put some kind of water, something to keep things moist. Wet smoking, you're right. This is as moist as any I've ever had. I didn't lose that moisture. Why? Because of the egg. Like we talked about, the air circulates around, sears it in. You're not losing heat, you're not losing moisture, and you're holding everything in there. And when you just wrap it up, you're just putting that moisture right back in there. It's not gone. It's still there. Fee, nominal pig. Thank you so much, Jason. Until Thank next you, time. And right after this, we got something else good coming up. Can I dig in? Dig in. I'll tell you what. Now, I just checked these, and these are perfect. I could make these fall apart if I wanted to. But for the last, and it depends on how done they are, and how long you want them out there. I'm gonna put these on for another, anywhere from half hour to an hour, and seal these up and let that moisture kind of get in there and let that flavor, all the flavor of the dry rub combined with the smoke flavor that's on the meat, along with this sauce that I'm putting on, let that go maybe 45 minutes, however long you want to do it. I'm gonna turn this over and do the other side. Care for them to fall apart. But I found that temperature and that combination to really work well for me. Now, this is a barbecue sauce that I like. There's so many over-the-counter things that are so good. I'm working on my special concoction right here. Now, let me tell you what. I can't hardly stand not digging into these right now. But, I gotta wait for everybody to get here. It is my birthday. It's gonna get nice and moist in that. Mm, mm, mm. It's gonna cook all in there. It's gonna seal in all that flavor. I'm gonna double wrap this side. It's gonna go back on the egg. Again, about 230 degrees. Let that get all nice. Moisturized with that nice barbecue sauce I put on there, and you talking about <laughs> delicious, I can't understand it. Now earlier, Jason did his pork butt. The only difference, the absolute difference, and everybody has their own way. I will seal that with mustard around the dry rub. By the way, that's a good dry rub. All right, I'm gonna put these back on, and in just a minute, Nikki's gonna come out and fix us some cheesy potatoes, she called them. Delicious, we'll be right back. Are you ready to go grab life by the gills? Maybe take a road trip to a place with no roads. Would you like to make an investment you know will pay off? Or go to a park that doesn't have a theme? Is it time to do a little team building with the team that matters most? Then your adventure starts here. What is it about L81 that tastes so good that makes you want more? Because it glorifies and it has great pep. Well, a true L8 drinker can drink them any way they come, but I, I like them out of a glass bottle better. What is your favorite memory of an L8-1? Uh, sitting in a tobacco barn after we got done housing, sitting on our wagon drinking a cold L8. I don't got no memories, pretty much. I'm losing them. Living room. Living room. Dining room. Dining room. Kitchen. Kitchen. Visit Housewarmings at 2312 Palumbo Drive in Lexington and let the outdoor living and grilling experts help you create your living space. Housewarmings. Stop by today and start living your outdoor dreams. 
Housewarmings, the outdoor living and grilling experts, 2312 Palumbo Drive, Lexington, Kentucky. All right, now I've got my pork butt. Well, it's kind of a small one today, and it's a frantic kitchen today. We're preparing for a birthday party. Some really groovy dude is having a birthday party. Oh, really? Whose birthday is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> anyhow, yeah. I'm going to put a little bit of this on here, and then I'm going to seal it up and take it back out to the egg and do about another hour. This is, mm, I'm telling you what, this is about ready to I gotta be careful because it's already beginning to fall off the bone. Turn that over there. Ooh, look at that, it's breaking open. The smell is fantastic. Now again, I like that 230 degree mark. You gotta let it go for a while. But when you're using that egg, you get all that Charcoal flavor along with everything else here. No, I'm telling you, what, can't beat it. Now, what are you doing over here? I know you're starting your making potatoes, like a layered cheese potato. Tell me how you're gonna make it. The kids like it. Well, I boiled all the potatoes already, so those are good. I'm gonna layer it. I'm gonna put. We're gonna shred some Velveeta. We're gonna shred an onion. This is what you call your cheesy potatoes, yeah. right? You make these for parties. Yeah. And... The kids like this. All our kids like this. I just kind of layer it up. I'm gonna bake it for an hour. That's one of those things that that you make that. I don't think anybody has ever tried and not liked it. How can you not like potatoes with cheese? Now what do you got? You got some olives going on there? Olives. Some people might not like olives. If you don't like olives, you don't have to put them in there. All right. All right, I'm wrapped up and getting ready to go back outside. What do you got so going gonna on So you're gonna help here? me. Cut my potatoes. Now mm -hmm. I gotta shred. I got this. What'd you got, four or five potatoes? Yeah, and we may need more now. I just, you can kind of make it. We're making a small dish tonight. You can mm -hmm. make it huge if you want. I'm gonna shred this Velveeta or any, you know, kind of barred cheese like this, but Velveeta's the best. It is good, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of messy, right? See how these things scare me. I end up losing body parts in there. So about how much, <laughs> how much, how much Velveeta are you putting out? Lots there? of it. It's like a, a third of a I bar. I had a half of a. This is half a, a half? bar. Yeah. These are cheesy potatoes. Yes. And we may not use it all, but I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna see. You're making me nervous, there. All right, I'll stop. All right. I'll stop doing that. Now yeah. we need to shred the same thing. Do this onion. We're gonna shred it into little tiny. Little do you want to do pieces? it? Not especially. In fact, while you're doing that, I'm going to take this outside because I don't want to get blinded by the onion. That's not nice. Let's see I don't how it fingers nice in Nice and my... little. You're still making me nervous. I'm feeling So we do about a half, a half a small onion there? I'm going to do all the way to the end if I can. This is a really emotional dish. <laughs> Yeah, getting This is gonna make me cry hard. That's a pretty strong onion. You're so happy that it's my birthday. All right, we, those are tears of joy. <laughs> right. Onion's still getting you. Are uh, oh, you just emotional uh, on that? It's your on birthday. That. I'm so happy you're gonna. Isn't be, that, isn't that you're gonna be 63. <laughs> all right, tell us what so you're this doing. This is all here. our mess. We're gonna we're gonna right. layer us potatoes. 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 How do you lay those potatoes? <laughs> now see how we kind of just have a little bit of a layer here. And we're gonna put. This is the magic sauce. Mayonnaise. mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. That is, that is the um, beginning of the food chain for humans. Yes, it's perfect. It should be in everything. Now we're going to see how these... Here's your onions. Go ahead. Know. Actually, just kind of see how now these... These aren't real strong onions. These are the yellow sweet onions. Man, this is... They're got to me. This one's potent. That. And we're going to take... This is a messy job, but it's... And you've been making this, these for 30 years. Yeah, at least 30. Maybe 40. 40, 50 years. We're just going to kind of... And it's all going to kind of mix together and almost make like a sauce. And we're saving the bacon and the olives for the end. So oh, that goes on top? Mm -hmm. I should know I've eaten these a thousand times. And our girls love olives, so we're going to go with the green olives. So you just go potatoes? Mm -hmm. We're just going to layer this up. Mayonnaise, mm -hmm. onions, cheese, okay. and you keep doing that. So we get to the top. I think I'm going to do about one more layer. These potatoes are already cooked. Right. So that makes everything really quickly. And you'd be surprised at how this mayonnaise and the cheese and all that mixing is wonderful. All right, the last time to cry. Those are stout. Yes, they are. But they cook right in. Kind of Meanwhile, we have ribs, and we have a butt out there. We could have more cheese, but I think it'll be all right. Do you want to sprinkle bacon on top? I guess bacon I cooked All you've done is, is taking some real right. yummy apple smoked bacon. But uh, we have a buddy of mine who's going to show us how to cold smoke bacon. And that is so delicious. I always get heartburn when I eat store-bought bacon. And he told me that, too. He said, he said, man, I've got heartburn every time I eat this. He said, but when you try this, there's all fresh ingredients, real syrup. Yeah brown sugar, none of that extra chemical stuff, no heartburn. 
Sounds good to me. But that's coming up shortly. Now, right. this, the girls won't even taste the olives. It's just, it'll give it a salty flavor. That's so right. So don't tell them there's olives. I won't tell them. All right. We'll tell it's them ready to go. Are, Let's we'll get her cooking. Jalapenos. All right, you ready? Yeah. I'll open it for you. All right, Nikki has gone to try to find some eye drops, and as I'm still struggling myself with the onions, let's break away for just a minute and try a wonderful treat from our buddy Matt. Check this out. Matt Falcone, Red Mouth, Bayou Bluegrass Catering. You know what? I like quick snacks, and I like my snacks to include something a little spicy, and I always got to have some meat. Show me something quick and easy. I got a bunch of people coming over. Everybody's going to like it. I love to cook with jalapenos. I think the big misnomer is that jalapenos are hot, and they are hot, but if you take the core out and you take all the seeds out, you really get rid of a lot of that heat, you know? And so all you gotta do is just remove that thing by cutting the center out of it. Just make sure you got all the seeds out. A little trick is put a little water in there. And then what I've done is just a really simple blend of some ground meat, some ground sausage. So you can use like Jimmy Dean's spicy sausage. Breakfast sausage, whatever, whatever, whatever kind mm, of sausage. Yeah, um, some cheese, some, some uh, spinach, maybe some onion, bell pepper, mm -hmm. okay? It's almost like stuffed mushrooms. That's kind of what we're doing here. Some onions, some garlic, and uh, if you want to put a little bacon in there, you know, you could do that as well. I see then, where you're going here and I'm liking it. And then all you do is you just kind of make that the same diameter of the jalapeno. Stuff it in there. Stuff it in there. Have the oven on, put it in a little pan, and 30 minutes later on 350. You putting oil on the bottom of it or anything? I put a little bit of, yeah, oil in there. Just maybe spray it with a little pan or something like that. And how long again for how much? At 350, 30 minutes. And what you got? Oh my gosh. It's a finger food. I'd say pick it up, you know, um, it's going to be a little warm, so just don't take a giant, don't take a giant box, but bite, but yeah, got the pepper. But you get the, the taste top. of the pepper without that big heat. Isn't that funny? How when you cook a pepper, it seems to take the heat out of it. That is delicious. That is absolutely delicious. It's hot. Mm. Oh, man. Let me tell you, as cold as it is today, that is wonderful on my throat. What do you call it? Just a stuffed jalapeno. And again, that is as simple and inexpensive as it gets when you got the friends over, the boys, and um, you'll, you'll find out who the, the tough guys are in the room. You've done it again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Make the rest of this. <laughs> Celebrating our 40th anniversary, Central Equipment provides you the right equipment to do the job right. 40 years ago, our father launched Central Equipment. Today, our family business is operated by sons and grandsons. Central Equipment's experts help you find the right Kubota equipment at the right price for all your turf, farm, and landscaping needs. Depend on Central Equipment and Kubota, 40 years strong. The right equipment to get the job done right. Hello, I'm Tim Farmer here on behalf of Kentucky Sheep and Goat Producers. Want something different tonight? Try delicious Kentucky Proud Goat or Lamb. From local cuts of fresh lamb and goat to melt-in-your-mouth farmstead cheeses, Kentucky farmers are committed to providing your family with only the finest products from their pastures to your plate. You can find Kentucky Proud Goat and Lamb products in your grocery store chains like Whole Foods and farmers markets, local restaurants, and it can even be mailed to your home. From fresh meats to farmstead cheeses and spreads, just look for the Kentucky Proud logo to be sure you're selecting the freshest products available. Kentucky Lamb and Goat, try something different tonight. To find a source for Kentucky Proud Lamb and Goat products near you, visit www.kysheepandgoat.org today. Kevin, are you sure this is okay? We're cool, I know a guy. Hey y'all! Run! Go! Run! Where'd they go? I was just gonna ask them what they were biting on. Go where the pros go for great deals on great gear and three easy ways to shop. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here.
Are you sure this is okay? Don't worry, I know a guy. Which has more caffeine, an L81 or a cup of coffee? I don't know if that's a good question. Probably L8. Cup of coffee. I'm gonna say coffee. L81. The answer is actually the coffee. A 12 ounce bottle of regular L8 has 37 milligrams of caffeine, and an eight ounce cup of coffee usually has about 95 milligrams of caffeine. But my favorite way to start the day is still the L8. Cup of coffee. Cup of coffee does. All right, now that is quite a spread. We got our cheesy potatoes. We got our coleslaw, homemade green beans. Oh my goodness! Here's why I like it. I like to put my pulled pork. Which look here. That's the way it yeah. should do. You pull on that bone, it should fall out. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, and my ribs. I can break these over, and they fall wow. apart. That's the best part. Look ever. at that right there. You gonna cry? You need no, more onions? I'm good. Just the kids were here, it'd be nice. The kids are here, the kids, I think I heard some, somebody coming through the front door. Did I hear? Happy birthday to you. That's what I'm talking Happy about. Happy birthday to, to me. Happy birthday, dear <laughs> Sam. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Okay, let me tell you, let's get some rules straight right here. I appreciate the birthday cards and all that stuff, but this pile here, mine. Three quarters of this, mine. Coleslaw, you can have this. I'm just kidding, y'all can have whatever you want. Hey, you know, it's all about good times. Anybody? Good friends. And good eats. good eats. Becca, what kind of birthday cake is that? It's a carrot ginger cake with lime cream cheese frosting. Pay no attention to the design. So it's let me ask you this, are you going to have this on the show here for a while? Yeah, absolutely. On the Farmer's Daughter Sweet Shop? corner type deal. We haven't confirmed we'll the name We'll tweak the name. We'll, we'll tweak, tweak the name. All right, <laughs> hey, it's been a happy birthday. Spring's right around the corner. I got baby chicks. I got green stuff growing out here. Basil, tomatoes, cabbage, all kinds of stuff. Spring's right around the corner. See you next week on Tim Armour's Country Kitchen. <laughs> you all blow the horns, I'll eat. <laughs> Don't forget to check out our Facebook page and give us a like and check out what's going on in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen world and check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com for those episodes you may have missed. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. See you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by L81, Bass Pro Shops, Elk Creek Vineyards, Housewarmies, Howard's Creek Authentic Beer Cheese, Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office, Weisenberger Mill, and Tim Farmer Productions.